I will start uh, introducing our colloquium speaker today. Uh, we have uh, Professor Rashid Suniaev who is visiting us uh, today and tomorrow. And uh, we're very honored to have him visit and, and give the colloquium today. So, you know, uh, Rashid has a long uh, uh, biography and list of things that he has done on, on science. Uh, uh, he uh, started with his uh, PhD uh, in, in, in Moscow uh, uh, wi uh, with Yakov uh, Zeldovich, uh, already in 1968. And, uh, and then he was, uh, very soon after that, he became uh, head of laboratory in theoretical astrophysics, uh, full professor in Moscow Institute of Physics. Um, he was also the uh, head of the, uh, at the Space Research Institute and the uh, uh, Russian Academy of Sciences. He spent uh, a long time uh, in, in Moscow when it was the USSR, then Russia. Uh, and then after having uh, uh, taught many students there and advised many students, uh, he, he went to Munich in, in 1995 and became the director of the Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics where he's at now, and he's also uh, spending some of his time usually in Moscow and travels to many places where he is invited. Uh, so it seems that uh, also uh, Professor Sunyaev, he's, he's loved wherever he goes, he, many, many countries across the world. Uh, he has, uh, as an example of this, he has received honorary prizes in many places from uh, different agencies of uh, many countries. Uh, just one example, so this year he was awarded the Eddington Medal of the Royal Astronomical Society and the Zeldovich Gold Medal of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Um, also from Germany, he got the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany, the Karl Schwarzschild Medal of the German Astronomical Society. And in the USA, he was visiting professor at the Institute of Advanced Study. Uh, he was awarded the Her Henry Norris Russell Award by the American Astronomical Society. And in China, he has also been visiting recently and uh, as an Einstein professor of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, his work is very well known uh, in cosmology. Uh, uh, he will talk today about uh, uh, spectral distortions of the cosmic microwave background. Uh, he has among the first papers in cosmic microwave background fluctuations, but also today he stays pretty active with the most modern things on spectral distortions. He's also expert on X-ray astronomy, space missions like Eurocita, so in a word, he's so active in so many things uh, today. Um, before we start, I also would like to remind all postdocs and students that uh, you will have an opportunity to speak to Dr. Sunyaev uh, in the afternoon. At 3.30, there will be a special meeting only for students and postdocs. I encourage you very much to go so that there is a quorum and a, uh, this is a unique opportunity for all of you where you get a chance uh, to ask your questions to this uh, world expert. Thank you very much. Thanks for your presence, uh, Rashid, here. It's a great pleasure to be here. I am speaking in this whole second time in my life. And I really, yesterday evening, Jordi showed me your beautiful city. It's really a great city. I will speak today about cosmic microwave background, and I am sure that you know about this great uh, discovery which occurred uh, 50 years ago. And I just came from the conference, CEB at 50, where four Nobelists were telling how they got Nobel Prize for this discovery and for using this CEB in the uh, for their research. This is the CMB, and this is great map of the sky uh, obtained by Planck spacecraft. What is important? Important that 50 years ago, Penzias and Wilson, they made very good dish for telecommunication, and their prediction was that the noise of this dish will be below uh, half a degree at 3.5 centimeters. And when they measured it, temperature was 3 degrees plus minus 0.5. And they were trying a year to, to find ways they error. And then other people told them that George Gamow uh, in the end of 40s told that maybe our universe was born hot. And in the, it's expanding and 
if we contract it back, then we will come to the situation that according to George Gamow, the all chemical elements should be boiled and everything should be just in the nuclear reaction, or everything up to uranium. This is wrong because we cannot jump from uh, lithium to, from beryllium to carbon, then it's possible only is very, in very massive stars, but his predictions was correct because maybe 90% of all helium in the universe, 99% uh, uh, of deuterium, and maybe 95% of lithium, everything was created in the first three minutes of the universe. And because at that time, George Gamow, it was necessary for him to have temperature of the order of billion Kelvin. Then expansion came and he predicted the temperature will be of the order of five Kelvin. Why this radiation is great? Because in every, if we just, if we know from theoretical physics, if I know temperature, then I know the energy density of radiation and I know immediately what is the amount of photons per a centimeter cube. And people immediately counted this, and this 411 photons per centimeter cube, everywhere in the universe. Also, there are relic neutrino. You all, uh, this is not my topic, but uh, everybody knows this. And temperature was measured by great spacecraft, Kobe Firas. And this, what is important, I will repeat this, that spectrum is ideal black body spectrum. In reality, at that time, when people, when Kobe's virus experiment measured this, and John Mother got Nobel Prize for this measurement, this was most perfect black body when, uh, which people have seen ever. It was impossible at that time to create in the lab so good black body. Today we can do this better. But at that time, they, were, they put upper limits to any distortions, and these upper limits were 10 in power minus 5. With precision 10 to the power minus 5, there, was, there were no any distortions, any deviations from black body spectrum. Something tremendous. And this is everywhere in the universe in any direction. In the beginning, people were very uh, happy that it's practically isotropic, but theorists are very bad people. They immediately uh, started to think how to, you know, make this black body not ideal. First, they immediately introduced, within maybe three years, a lot of theories why there should be found angular fluctuations of black body. First, angular fluctuation is obvious. We are moving around sun, 30 kilometers per second. We are moving around center of our galaxy with velocity of the order of 250 kilometers per second. And our galaxy is moving as a whole uh, in the field of surrounding large-scale structure of the universe. We, there should be dipole in the direction where we are moving. Uh, brightness of radiation should be higher than in opposite direction. People very long were unable to find this prediction. Now it is so bad, so bright, every, every spacecraft see it, and we are taking it out, and we are using our, the motion of uh, our Earth around Sun 30 kilometers per second to calibrate devices because we know exactly what is our velocity. Therefore, we can predict uh, how much and so on. And people were considering that 30 kilometers or 300 kilometers per second is nothing. It's not necessary to take, in, uh, to take into account the relativistic correction in the Doppler formula. Now we see Planck shows us that the it's wrong, it's necessary to take into account uh, relativistic correction. We see the quadrupole and octopole and so on, which are connected uh, um, uh, with non-correct use of Doppler formula without relativistic, uh, without special relativity. But this is beautiful picture which Planck spacecraft gave us now. Uh, first, this Planck spacecraft and uh, w map gave picture uh, practically similar uh, with uh, worse resolution. What is important? The dark blue, most dark blue points here showing deviations are 200 microkelvin on the level of 2.7 Kelvin. 
These are maximal deviations what we see if we will take out the uh, dipole. Dipole is uh, millikelvins. And <coughs> red are the most bright points. And they also, most bright points are on the level of 200 micro K. And up to this level, sky is excellent, isotropic, but now spacecraft sees this. And I will show you what we see in addition a little later. This is a spectrum which Kobe measured, this Planck. I am working in Max Planck Institute, but he introduced, he was first person who, you remember, there was really a gene spectrum before and twin, and Planck found a way how to, uh, you know, glue them together. And I can tell you that these error bars are thousand times higher than real error bars. Real error bars are much smaller than uh, thickness of this curve. And this is Kobe Firas, John Mother, who measured this. And everybody, every student knows uh, from uh, courses of physics, Planck formula. It is one quarter of electron volt of energy in every cubic centimeter of our universe. It's a lot of energy also. Yes. What is important and what we should remember from the beginning? Adiabatic expansion of the universe preserves the black body spectrum established in early times. Uh, for example, during electron positron annihilation. This is because X equal uh, frequency divided to temperature is uh, invariant, relativistic uh, invariant, and expansion of the universe doesn't change it. Therefore, let's remember that if we had only temperature increases, but Planckian black body spectrum is conserving if we do not have additional heating or cooling. Um, yes, uh, but this result of Kobe virus was obtained 27 years ago. And nothing came from this. Now we have great progress in technology of experiments, and especially of detectors and cryogenic. There will be PIXI proposal to NASA, and it will be from 100 to 1,000 times more sensitive. And now there are many theoretical models predicting significant energy release in the early universe and spectral distortions of CMB. Most important, a lot of them are connected with decay of anni or annihilation of unknown types of particles, which were existing in early universe and decayed, and no traces today. And CMB will, if there was significant energy release, CMB will remember this, and I will tell you how it's possible to do. I will speak also about most massive uh, bound objects in the universe. And these are clusters of galaxies in visible universe, what we can observe up to the horizon. There are maybe 150,000 of these objects. This theory, we don't know, nobody measured all of them. And these objects are great. For example, this is NASA Hubble Space Telescope propaganda slide, uh, cluster ABEL 2218. You see, here, thousands of galaxies, this small part of the cluster. But what is most important, each of these things are galaxies inside cluster. But you see here such things. This is gravitational lensing. Cluster has huge gravitational potential. And galaxies, is, which are much behind, they're magnified by gravitational lensing, there is, everybody knows Einstein radius, gravitational radius, and uh, galaxy, which was, uh, how to say, uh, spiral, for example, it becomes, it gives, uh, it becomes part of the, uh, of the um, circle. And you see here, a lot of them. Each of them now are amplified by the mirrors of Hubble Space Telescope and by the cluster of galaxy. And Richard Ellis gave several days ago in European Southern Observatory great review 
showing a lot of uh, new clusters which are discovering, uh, which are discovered, and how he is discovering new more and more distant galaxies and quasars, which are amplified by these clusters of galaxies. Okay, what is important also that people are measuring the velocities of these galaxies. And velocities are of the order of 1,000. Dispersion of velocity is of the order of 1,000 kilometers per second. And this shows you can measure the mass of the cluster because, um, how to say, this, uh, they are, according to Virial theorem, they are in equilibrium. And if you know kinetic energy, you can find what is potential energy. This uh, in the 30s was made by, um, by uh, Fritz Zwicky, and Fritz Zwicky at Caltech told that visible mass of the clusters is 50 times smaller than the, uh, the mass which is invisible. And he told that there should be missing mass in 30s. Today we know this is dark matter. And it is there, and we're measuring this dark matter using this potential, using this kinetic energy and then potential, using this gravitational lensing, and many additional effects. This important, and as I told you, gravitational potential now mainly defined by invisible dark matter. And today we see not only strong lensing, I was showing you strong lensing, we see also the weak lensing how the picture is changing. And this is now CMB is showing also the presence of clusters, which we haven't seen before, just on the sky, due to the gravitational lensing. And bipolarization arises also due to gravitational lensing. This is great science today. And best op optical x-ray uh, radio telescopes are uh, working on this. There is, because. Uh, this huge gravitational potential, gas in this potential is heated by for up to temperatures of the order of 10 kilo electron volt. What is we are dreaming to have in our tokamaks? But it's observed now in hundreds of clusters of galaxies. And el but electron density is extremely small. For example, this comma, the average density of gas is of the order of three electrons per hundred cubic centimeters. And we can measure also using X-ray atmosphere what is the dark matter mass, 10 and power 15 solar masses. These are extremely big objects. And sound velocity of gas is close to velocities of galaxies. Oh. Now I can, I can uh, will not speak too much about this, but there are three effects which we are introduced by Zeldovich and me in the beginning of 70s, in the end of 60s and beginning of 70s. I will speak mainly about thermal effect, change of CMB spectrum in the direction of cloud with hot gas due to, Compton, uh, due to Thompson scattering, then kinetic e effect, it's analogy of dipole effect, where we can measure what is a peculiar velocity of cluster of galaxies. And then blurring effect, if the picture which I showed, which, uh, which uh, is observed by Planck spacecraft. Uh, we will try to see this picture through the cluster of galaxies. Due to scattering on, on uh, electrons, there is a blurring. And uh, these features, uh, acoustic peaks, will become immediately a few percent smaller. We can also detect now a lot of people are doing this. Why it is important to see the spectral, uh, why scattering is making clusters of galaxies visible? If I will, uh, we all know about Thomson scattering. If you will take landau lifshitz classical theory of fields, this was my test book when I was a student. I remember that it was written there that Thomson scattering doesn't change frequency. Why it doesn't change frequency? Because photon is coming, uh, plane wave is coming to the electron, and electron oscillates with frequency of the plane wave and radiates in other directions. This is Thomson scattering. And because oscillation is with the same frequency as the plane wave, your radiation is also on the same frequency. This every student should know, but 
when uh, in Russia people were working on the, uh, on the hydrogen bomb, they were very afraid that hydrogen bomb, they explode and uh, deuterium in the ocean and also oxygen in the atmosphere will detonate. And then, you know, not only enemy will be burned, but everything. And therefore, they were trying to find the processes which can delete, delete the temp the very high temperatures. And they discovered this process uh, that when a uh, uh, photon is scattered on the electron, uh, and if there is motion of electrons, electrons are hot, then there is Doppler effect, and therefore line is broadened. Uh, you can look what is the second order Doppler. It is 4 kT to a meter square. Photons are moving to higher energies. And they demonstrated that due to this process, temperature cannot be during explosion higher than 10 in power 8 Kelvin. This was great secret. They knew this, and therefore it's possible to explode. Temperature is too low for detonation of deuterium, for example, in ocean. But after tests of the first atomic bomb, they found much more strong mechanisms. This was excitation of, of the level of highly ionized oxygen, which doesn't permit temperature in the atmosphere to go higher than a few million Kelvin. After that, everybody forgotten about this. Uh, paper was uh, unclassified and published in 56, even it was done in 48, 40, 47, 48. This uh, uh, Zeldovich, who was chief of this work, was unable to sign it because he was chief of the declassified, uh, how to say, of committee which was declassifying papers. And it was impossible to declassify his own paper. Therefore, one of his close companions signed this paper and published it. But it was useless, therefore it's fine. Now this paper, uh, this mechanism is extremely important uh, for astrophysics. I remind you how everything is occurring. You see here scattering 5.1 keV line scattered on the oh, 5.1 keV electron and I have laser line. And after scattering this laser line has this spectrum. I was doing this on the slide rule in the in 60s this was the best computer at the time no calculators nothing and then you see how my hand was uh, how to say not it is not computer made graphics it's just from original paper and you see the broadening people were asking me why you are using 5.1 keV instead of 1 keV in the formula there is kT divided to a square uh, m meter square is 511 keV. I was uh, increasing the precision of my computations with this. You understand? Yes. Now you see here that right wing of the line is much brighter than the left wing. It is because rich electrons are giving the energy to poor photons, and photons are moving from low energy to higher, to lower frequency, to higher frequency, and this is the resulting spectrum. And you see, this is very important that in religions, part of the spectrum at low frequencies, brightness of CMB will decrease, and here it will increase in the wind region. Yes, what was the main prediction that in the Due to this decrease in religions region, if I will look to the cluster of galaxies, I will see there is a shadow. There will be negative source in the background. There will be like absorption. This was prediction made in reality in 69, and it was very long not observed. Even everything was very simple. And now Planck spacecraft and a lot of ground-based instruments are easily observing this. And the filters on Planck spacecraft were specially designed to absorb both negative sources, positive sources, and also frequency 217 gigahertz where effect is zero. And this is cluster which European Space Agency 
again, propaganda slide, how powerful they are. You see negative sources at low frequencies, 143 gigahertz, 100 gigahertz, 70 gigahertz, and positive sources at 353, 500 gigahertz, and zero at 217, as it was predicted. 217 where you're crossing. He is negative source, he is positive. And this is observed now practically everywhere, hundreds of objects. And these are 900 clusters confirmed by X-ray observations or optical observations from Planck. You see them. And this very, very interesting result. People are doing cosmology. But even much more impressive from the point of view of observations of clusters of galaxies are instruments which are staying now in the worst for leaving places of the Earth. Uh, they, these places are great for submillimeter astronomy because they are cold. Therefore, there, are, there is not too much water in the atmosphere. It's possible to observe on submillimeters. And also, they are great because atmosphere is not turbulent. And you see this is 10 meter South Pole telescope. Uh, leader is uh, John Carlstrom from the University of Chicago. And this six meter Atacama cosmology telescope, very close to ALMA, giant interferometer of Europe and United States and also Japan. Uh, this five kilometer height in the Chilean Andes. I think that you all know, and leader of this construction was and is Lyman Page from Princeton. I know now uh, 15 people, postdocs and uh, now f young faculty in different universities of United States, in Chicago, in Northwestern, in Berkeley. And these people spent one night on the South Pole Telescope observing. And you will, I see that, uh, especially theoretician will tell, oh, one night I am not sleeping every day, finishing my paper and so on. One night on every pole of the Earth is half a year. And they're staying there uh, without any connection with the Earth. No one uh, plane can come, you know, nothing. There is only radio connection and some internet. Restricted. Uh, it was in the beginning restricted. Now they have broad channels through the spacecraft and so on. But I can tell you these are really hero, and I will show you the results. Observations are going. This is great, even under this condition when uh, temperature is extremely low. This is a great place because also BICEP2 is now. It's, uh, it was, this photo was taken before BICEP2 came. And Somewhere here is ice cube. Certainly you know all about this great neutrino experiment. Why this experiment, Atacama Cosmology Telescope and SPT are so good and so important? Most important is that if I will take standard, how to say, some kind of one meter and go in the universe to very, very large distances. This meter, angular dimension of this one, my, my one meter will decrease. And then, according to the uh, Friedman model of the universe, Friedman matrix, it starts to increase. It's, you know, angular diameter problem in cosmology. And you see here how angular, this is angular dimension of cluster of galaxies. 500 kiloparsec, and how angular dimensions of this 100 kiloparsec changing with redshift. This redshift 100, 110, redshift 1, 2, 3, 4. And you see from redshift practically 0.2 up to redshift 4, angular dimension is practically constant and this one arc minute. And this is great. SPT with 10 meter diameter at 100 gigahertz has resolution one arc minute. It can exactly measure all clusters, detect and even see the structure of the clusters of galaxies uh, for any redshift starting for, from, uh, okay, from zero up to five. We do not have any cluster, but it detected already many clusters at redshift two. 
And this is great discoveries here. And John Karlstrom gave me several pictures uh, uh, and asked me, uh, permitted me to show, but told don't give anybody else. It is, <laughs> I don't know, priority uh, slides. This shows five, 50 degrees on the sky, 94 gigahertz frequency, and this great WMAP spacecraft. And you see fluctuations on the sky, and these are acoustic peaks. I will later tell you these are traces of acoustic waves which were existing in the early universe. Let's go further. This is great spacecraft Planck, 143 gigahertz. It's bigger mirror, and also frequency is higher. 50 degrees square. Twice finer angular resolution, seven times more sensitive, seven times more deeper. These are also mainly acoustic peaks. Sound waves in the early universe, they traces on the sky. SPT, South Pole Telescope, 150 gigahertz, 50 degrees square, 13 times finer angular resolution, 10 meter dish, then Planck, and 50 times deeper. It's on the ground. Now, this year, South Pole Telescope will install in the focal plane 1,400, 14,500 cryogenic bilometers working at the temperature 200 microkelvin. And they together will be observing this one source, and then you will scan the sky. It's very good. And this again, you see here, not only uh, from the acoustic waves, but you also see point sources, many of them. And you see some black sources. Now you see the same picture, but filtered out large structure, large scale structure. Large scale structure are these uh, higher uh, acoustic waves and you have now only fluctuations which are which have characteristic dimensions of the few the five arc minute maximum and you have a lot of bright sources and i told you about dark sources and what is the nature now you found for example um, this source you're observing it and picking what is it. But what are these dark pictures? What they discovered. Every of these bright sources, then people from Caltech used ALMA. And in 12 minutes on ALMA, on 64 dishes, they were finding that these are extremely bright galaxies. For example, this at redshift 2.7, submillimeter galaxies with huge uh, stellar, uh, um, a lot of stars are forming here. But what was most important, they see that this is gravitational lensing. These objects are amplified, and then we see them. And in 12 minutes, ALMA is detecting at least two lines of carbon monoxide and or carbon-2. 158 microns, and it's a able immediately to find what is the redshift of the object. And this, every of these objects is gravitationally amplified uh, galaxy at higher redshift. This is what SPT is doing, but if we go further, I would not discuss, you see, uh, at redshift 3, 4.2, and so on. And this, all this tail, what they're observing, all they are gravitationally lensed. But when you go to these dark objects, these are shadows in the microwave background from clusters of galaxies. This is scattering on the hot gas, and they are discovering them every day. You see how many, and these are like negative souls. This positive and this hole in the background. When you go to the optical, you take big telescope optical, you are observed, and you see many objects here, and you see immediately gravitational lensing. 
you see very, very distant galaxies. Therefore, everybody loves these new discoveries because they're giving you additional work for optical astronomers. Among, there are a lot of physics. For example, Phoenix cluster of galaxies at redshift 0.6. It was observed by Chandra, Galax, Magellan uh, telescope. These are spacecraft. And it is 800 solar masses a year uh, are created. This is a new star formation in this cluster of galaxies. Luminosity 8 in the power 10 power 45 arcs per second in X-rays. And there is huge cooling flow, 3,000 solar masses a year. Uh, black hole in the center is discovered, and it accretes 60 solar masses a year, eating 60 solar masses. And this is nobody knew about this object. Now we know it was discovered due to these effects. And I was speaking with Lindsay Blim. She is a young lady who worked with the data of uh, SPT, and she found, she published, OK, a lot of people together with her, but she was leading author. They discovered here on this curve black points are SPT discoveries, and this is 800 clusters of galaxies up to redshift 2 from SPT. Red uh, objects here are discovered by Planck, also 1,000, but very nearby. And these are masses from 1 times 10 power 14 solar mass in dark matter up to 10 power 3 times 10 power 15 solar masses in dark matter. Uh, green po or blue points are Rosatol sky survey. You see much less now than CMB is giving. It's very interesting. This green points, these are Atacama Cosmology Telescope. Here altogether, more than 1,500,000 clusters. It's very, very rapidly devol um, evolving uh, science. We with Rishi Hartree in uh, Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics in a month, he will be professor of uh, uh, Tata Center of Theoretical Physics in Mumbai, uh, Bombay. Uh, we decided to sum all, uh, some contribution, um, uh, spectral changes from Planck clusters at small redshift from this, and SPT cluster at higher redshift. We did this, and you see here, and we found that contribution distortions will be of the order of 5 times 10 power minus 8. But we went further. And this is a prediction modeling with Klaus Dulac. We made what we predict on the whole sky. And this is a spectrum of which Y map, uh, which Planck did. This is a map produced by Rishi Hartree. And you see all well-known clusters are here and superclusters are here. And you see a lot of objects and also some noise. 10 arc minute resolution. Our prediction was many years ago with um, Jose Alberto Rubino Martin, who is now in, uh, in uh, he was our postdoc, but now he is in uh, Canarian Island, in the observatory, Canarian Islands. Yes, and we predicted that if you are counting clusters of galaxies, then result noise on the maps will be not Gaussian, but will have skewness, because we have much more negative sources than positive. This was our prediction. And uh, what Planck sees? This is the Planck, and you see uh, here sign is uh, opposite. You see here the tail, which was predicted by Jose Albert and me. You see it, and this is the additional noise. If we sum all this noise, we will get distortion, it's, uh, which will be 2 times 10 power minus 6. It's only. Six, it's, um, I can tell you that it's six 
uh, it is 6.8 uh, times weaker than the uh, stronger, uh, weaker than the Kobe Fires upper limit, 15, 10 power minus 6. One second. Yes, 10 power minus 5. We, it's weaker, uh, 6.8 times. Uh, we are uh, now we are telling that if Pixie will be launched, first what it detects, it detects such distortions immediately. There are distortions on the sky. This is important. Now I wish to to, to speak, tell you a few words about two milestones in the life of the universe. One milestone, this redshift, 0, 6, 30, 1,000, 10 power 4, 10 power 5, 10 power 6. And we are here. Reionization, everybody heard about this, and this is time of recombination at redshift 1100. And uh, I'm glad to speak today a little more about black body because many people in uh, popular papers are writing that during recombination of the hydrogen, all CMB photons were created. No, no one photon was created. Oh, 10 to the power minus 8 of photons was cre were created here. But uh, last moment when it was possible for us to create black body spectrum was at redshift 2 million. Not in the time of recombination of uh, annihilation of positrons and so on. I will speak before about the recombination. And recombination, if you will take just uh, Saha formula, equilibrium ionization degree in uh, universe, uh, it occurs, you see, according to this law. And I remember Zoldovich asked me to find ways recombination. I use this formula, gave talk on the seminar, and my friend, uh, Jim Kurt, who was whole life was observing Lyman alpha line, asked me, Rashid, and where is Lyman alpha line? If there is recombination, there should be Lyman alpha line. I told him Lyman alpha line is in in uh, sub-millimeter band, which today nobody can observe, and Lyman alpha will be very weak, and so on. It's not important. But then when I came to my room in dormitory, I was unable to sleep. I was not sleeping three nights, thinking, where is Lyman alpha? And I discovered that optical depth for Lyman alpha is enormously high, and Lyman alpha cannot escape. It just going up and the universe is expanding very slow and it cannot escape. And it's waiting how to die. And dying it uh, because there is equilibrium between a second level on the hydrogen and continuum. Photons are taking it. And I came to Zildovich, told him finally it was possible to find that there are papers about two photon decay of 2s level, not 2p, which radiates Lyman alpha, but 2s, and if 2p level lifetime is 10 power minus 9 of the second, 2s is 1 tenth of the second. Today, exact computations show that 70% of all recombinations are going through the 2s level, and 30% through the Lyman alpha escape in the distant wings. And this is how everything is going. And then we have uh, some freezing amount of electrons on the level of 10 power minus 4. And there are beautiful many things. But what is important, we know now what is the recombinational curve. And we know what is the visibility. Why this curve is important? Here, we do not have electrons. Here, we have electrons. Here, optical depth of the universe for Thomson scattering is huge. Here at redshift below 800, universe is completely uh, transparent. Therefore, if there were some non-uniformities formed somewhere here, we will see today these non-uniformities. And this was understood at that old times. You see here a formula from our paper with Zeldovich. And this was the visibility function, it is written. And what is important, that there is sharp maximum at redshift 1055, 
and this is the width, and so on. I can tell you what Planck and WMAP are observing with precision. Few percent are confirming this formula, which we got in 69, uh, published in uh, 70. This is a visibility function. And what is in addition we are uh, speaking today, it is the result to all high level lines of hydrogen. And we have chance to observe them. And they are coming from redshifts of the order of 1200 to 1500. And this is a spectrum which we predict. Look, this Lyman alpha, Balmer alpha, Passion alpha, bracket alpha, and so on. This is a spectrum of hydrogen, but shifted 1,000 times to submillimeter and uh, millimeter and centimeter band. And this is a prediction. If we can measure, we can say what was occurring at the time, what were the conditions. But in addition, there are traces of two recombinations of helium from alpha particles to helium two and from helium two to helium one. And you see these additions. It would be possible to measure what was amount of abundance of helium at redshift 6,400 and at redshift of the order of, uh, uh, of, the order of 2,400. It would be possible to detect this. And now Americans with Pixie are telling us that this is possible, but there are people also who can do this from the ground. Ten years ago, Lyman Page, when I told him about this problem and showed the picture, Lyman Page, who just got for ground-based CMB observations Gruber Price, told me, Rashid, one good PhD student, five years, and we will discover this. Seven later, uh, years later, I came to Lyman Page and told you were telling me five years and everything will be done. Lyman looked to me and told, but where is good PhD student? <laughs> this was his answer. <laughs> I don't know. But now several people in the University of Chicago started to measure on the roof of, uh, of the building of uh, Chicago Space Center, Space Science Center. They're trying to see s such things, and they, then they will move to South Pole or to Atacama to observe these lights, also from ground. People think that a lot of things is possible to do. This visibility function is very important because as uh, Eugene Lifshitz, the same Lifshitz as uh, uh, Landau and Lifshitz book, Eugene Lifshitz, uh, um, first showed that there are acoustic waves in the universe when energy density of radiation was higher than energy density of matter and dark matter. And this occurred at redshifts from up to uh, one, uh, 1100. And these waves, standing waves, sound waves, they oscillate. Time is running. And at the time of recombination, they are coming with different phases. And as a result, we will get such modulation of the, uh, of the fluctu uh, fluctuations of density and velocities and so on in the universe. And this was prediction of baryonic acoustic oscillations. You know them. And also existence of acoustic peaks in the CMB spectrum. Now, this is observed, but it was explain it much, much earlier. In reality, Lifshitz did this. And let us speak also about black body photosphere. In the spring of 1966, Yakov Zeldovich, oh, there are three stars he got from, for different ato atomic hydrogen and so on bombs in Russia. Uh, when he returned to Moscow, I became his student. And he asked me to review on the group seminar the preprints of laser and burbages, stating that CMB spectrum is just the stellar light thermalized by the dust. It was easy to show that this is impossible, even laser and burbages. Laser was professor of Harvard, and Jeffrey Burbage and Margaret Burbage were great scientists already at that time. I was just a graduate student, but it was possible to show that they are wrong. But I decided to check in addition. 
what will be the Russell-Land free-free optical depth of the universe for CMB? And this was shock for me. It was very, very small up to reach of 10 power 8. But Thomson optical depth was huge, 10 power 7 at the same time. I came to Zildovich, told him he was also <laughs> very interested that it is impossible to create black body. And then we started to walk how it is possible to create black body in this universe, which is optically seen. Why it is important? It's important because there is viscosity in the universe, and uh, this viscosity and thermal conductivity, which kills sound waves at small scales. And this, all of you know, this is the name is silk dumping. Even Eugene Lifshitz already wrote in his paper, there will be viscosity which kills sound waves in small scales. But he did not new temperature, and Silk knew it, and he computed, and he is absolutely right. And you see here, this was initial spectrum of angular fluctuations, or uh, um, perturbations of the density of matter, and all of them disappeared due to viscosity at, uh, and this is the uh, angular scale, and uh, L, uh, uh, yes, and these are, uh, uh, um, how to say, expansion on the map. Our pretty, uh, everybody knows that there is nothing when you go to the dimensions of SPT, South Pole Telescope, or Atacama Cosmology Telescope. Everything decayed. There are no perturbations at smaller uh, dimensions. But this energy dissipated, and it is there in CMB as a distortions of the spectra, and we should see it. This, was my, this is the main thing, why people today are very interested in this thing. And there are several distortions, Y type, like in clusters of galaxies. Uh, and here is mu type, I will tell you a little about this. But what, what is most important, using Lyman alpha, using CMB, using all observations of large-scale structure, we know what, is the, uh, what are the perturbations in the universe, initial perturbation and spectrum, uh, up to one megaparsec, or maybe even up to one uh, inverse megaparsec k, up to this dimension. But it's possible using uh, CMB data to go up to 10 power 4. And then we will know about the spectrum produced during inflation. Uh, we will make it to uh, 17 e volts. Today we know only maybe 10 e volts. This is why people are so interested. I will uh, show you only the spectrum, which we introduced at the time. There is a Bose-Einstein spectrum of radiation when you, I will tell this, it is picture which we wrote at the time, strong deviations were possible, but today, today this is a spectrum of Bose-Einstein spectrum equilibrium. What is important that it has, it depends on chemical potential, which depends on the number density of photons. It's when we have not full equilibrium, thermodynamic equilibrium, but we have equilibrium with given amount of photons. We inject energy, but amount of photons is the same. It's not black body. Uh, it's, uh, how to say, company equation. The companization very rapidly establishes this spectrum at uh, redshifts higher than 10 power 5. I will, yes. And these are two Spectra, I will show them to you. Yes. This is Y distortion, which I showed, which we see in the clusters of galaxies when there is a hot gas. And this is y, mu distortion. And it's possible using Fisher matrix to show that uh, future spacecraft will be able to distinguish them. These are upper limits from Kobe Fira spacecraft. We found with Rishi also intermediate spectra with Jens Hlobe. And uh, here it's possible for redshifts from 10 power 4 to 10 power 5. 
it will be possible not only measure how much energy was uh, released, but also measure at what time it was released. For example, what was the lifetime of difficult uh, particles which were decaying at that time. It's very interesting that uh, we need additional processes which are not important in the uh, Earth. And we are working with double Compton. And double Compton, in classical way, is very similar to the Bremsstrahlung. If there is proton, electron is moving, accelerating, and radiates gamma photon. If I have Compton scattering, uh, photon changes its direction, gives recoil to the electron, and this electron radiates. Small photon, this is double uh, Compton, very similar processes, and double Compton and Bremsstrahlung very well create and absorb photons on very low frequencies. And result is tremendous because you can very rapidly establish Bose-Einstein distribution, and then you, at low frequencies, your uh, supply new photons due to Bremsstrahlung and double Compton and fill this gap, producing black body. This was result which we did with Zeldovich. This formula, how uh, this is um, production of photons, is scattering, how deviations will be dying. Danese and Dezotzi use this formula to make uh, it's in beautiful way afterwards. And we know that today that there is a black body photosphere at redshift 10 in power, 2 times 10 power 6. And we are unable to see huge energy release due to electron positron annihilation, due to nuclear reactions. Only due to silk dumping, we can see things. I think that I have no time to speak about uh, cooling uh, deficiency of uh, deficiency of temperature. Uh, this again, Bose-Einstein condensation of photons. I think it's time for me to finish, and I can tell you only one thing: that experiments of the Kobe virus are possible not much often than once in 25 years, and theories are dreaming that they will be. Uh, device with a sensitivity able to detect mu type distortion on the level of 10 power minus 9 of CMB. And it will permit us to study recombination lights of hydrogen for, and helium from redshifts 1,500, 2,400, and 6,000. And there are many additional things which we dream. And I can tell you that there are huge amount of processes which people now are considering and looking for possibility to detect different types of energy release due to cosmic streams, due to particle decay, due to decay of primordial magnetic field, evaporation of black holes, quantum wave function collapse, and so on and so on. And this is new rich science, and during the um, conference CMB at 50 in Princeton a few weeks ago. Everybody agreed that we now know that bipolarization problem will be decided very soon, both from Earth and space and balloons. But this will be the next challenge for experimental CMB astronomy. Excuse me for being so long. Thank you. So we have some time for questions. Anybody would like to ask a question? When you showed that picture about the mass against a redshift for SPT, uh, about the yes. limbs and co-authors, there seems to be a, a decaying trend in the, in the lower uh, bound. Uh, can, you, can you put it again? One Is second. there any observational bias for that? Or? One second, I will. I was trying uh, this night to make uh, talk with 35 slides. I finish it with, yes. uh, to the, uh, with 72, and now decrease it to 65. No, no, it, it was already there. Already? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. I think it it's was here, uh, this one, yes. This one. So the, the black points there, there is a, uh, yes. a decreasing trend. 
Oh, yes. As a function of redshift. So yes. is this a bias this is, or? Uh, oh, I can tell you. I can tell you that uh, during my talk on CMB50, and when I was also in Chicago, I was uh, giving talk there on Pixie Workshop. I told that there is really great trend and you see here the telescope is becoming more and more sensitive at higher redshifts. You are completely right. So why? And this is correct. And there is very old papers of Nick Kaiser and several other people who told that clusters, just very simple formula out of model solution, self-similar solution, uh, if you first clusters were created in the universe, which was much more dense. Therefore, to go uh, to, how to say, to, viria, to virial virilization, they have much higher density inside. And in addition, because they have higher gravity, gravi gravitational potential, they have high, higher temperature. Therefore, there is, it is easier to detect them both in X-rays, because emission measure is higher, and CMB. And uh, there is a paper about this of Churaza, Vichlinin, and Mai in monthly notices, how it goes. And I told to, Le to Leslie Blim that there is this uh, trend and that she already detected it, as you also detected. You see, we are moving <laughs> immediately when I saw this picture. I told that there is this effect and they are becoming more sensitive. And I'm glad that person just from sitting in the room immediately can do this. Leslie told me that she will check and uh, she will reply me within several months, uh, proving that it is exactly corresponds to the theoretical formula. But they nor uh, John Carson, nobody knew this. After, when I uh, mentioned, made the same uh, mentioned during uh, my talk in, uh, during conference in CMB50, um, David Spergel came to me and told that he doesn't believe the estimates of the mass at higher redshifts, and it's necessary to use additional gravitational landing experiments to prove this. I thought, fine, <laughs> do this, and it's additional confirmation of simple theoretical formula. It's easier to observe objects at higher edges than in longer, if you have good angular resolution. Fine, that was a very good question. Thank you. But let me ask another question on the, so, uh, the, yes. the, the new distortions that you mentioned, that uh, of course people are looking forward to measure this with these future missions, Pixie and so on. So then, uh, could you remind us, uh, if you just take a uh, most standard model of inflation, Assume that there is a fixed a primordial power or initial power spectrum. Then, uh, due to the uh, dissipation uh, going to small scales, what is the value of uh, this Y and new distortions that you would expect? I can tell you, yes. Uh, I can tell you this is a very important question, and I'm speaking a lot with Slavo Mukhanov about this because uh, now. You know that the Ludovic Garrison spectrum doesn't work. And very simple prediction of Chibisev and Muhammad for 1980 in the short paper uh, demonstrates that, uh, uh, demonstrates, uh, that, uh, that um, uh, spectrum. They predicted the deviation from Garrison and Zeldovich to uh, 4%, and it is measured. Just that prediction. Several people like Goose, they're now telling, oh, they just you know, put finger in the sky and stochastically did this. But then they used uh, 60, that inflation will make 60, uh, make the expansion. If both will be 60, this was the assumption, and they got this percentage. Uh, everybody agrees, well, this is a prediction for the zeldovich garrison spectrum or for spectrum of Kibsov. Muhammad, how much energy will be released? And it is, if I integrate it uh, from redshift to mid two million to thousand, it will be 4.5 to the power minus nine. Pixie will detect this. But, but, even Muhammad is telling that everything is possible. 
maybe you go up, maybe you go down, maybe you don't measure this. You know? it's, uh, I told you everything is, uh, this uh, fluctuations disappeared. And only one, tra one uh, traces obviously are in neutrino, and second traces are in neutrino. It will be a little more difficult to trace at CUB, even on the level of uh, 5 times 10 power minus 9. But this is this, uh, a lot of energy in principle. Not every particle can produce so much energy. And this is just prediction of the standard theory. Okay, well, so then uh, we will stop here. So let's thank uh, Rashid again for his